So you talk about me being scared. Yeah. So when I was a young DC detective constable at Hounslow Police Station, I dealt with a bouncer at Yatesies who had had his throat slit literally from ear to ear. Now... It, it killed him, right? No. No? He survived. survived. So he okay, well. was an ex-American Marine. Okay. So he, he toughed it out and he survived. Okay. I was the officer in the case and um, and I ended up dealing with it. So we had a bit of CCTV. So this would have been um, late 90s. Uh, we had a bit of CCTV um, and we had some witness statements. And it ended up being... The suspect ended up, this, this guy that I arrested, he worked for the Adams family. Now, if you're from London, I think one of the Adams brothers just recently been arrested. But the Adams family run uh, a lot of the drugs trade in uh, in London. And this guy, I can't name the name, unfortunately, but this guy was one of their, um, the, the, the easiest way to describe it is contract killer. So he, he was their enforcer. And he'd already done 12 years for killing a Irish guard, stabbed him in the heart, got 12 years for manslaughter. And before I arrested him, um, he was put up for drowning and torturing somebody literally two weeks before. And all I can tell you is that I dealt with this guy and we ended up getting arrested and he got a life sentence for um, attempted murder. I've never in my entire life seen evil in one person. He was the kind of guy you'd look at and... I, I, honestly, even and I, I'm quite a hardened cop, or I was back then. Even I was intimidated, and I remember once I had to further arrest him for another offence. And I was in a room, just the two of us, and I had to. Uh, we were on first name terms then, because uh, we'd obviously been dealing with each other for a while. And I had to further arrest him, and he went ballistic. Now I thought he might go ballistic, and would you believe it? Because of my connections with the TSG, I had them waiting outside. <laughs> um, and um, but obviously, I wanted to kind of show him that I was the boss, as it were. Um, I wasn't the boss. So when you say went the ballistic, did you become violent or just yeah? He became, didn't hit me. Didn't hit me. He stood up and 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 like, it's like fucking hell, John. What you fucking mean? And all this kind of stuff. And, and it was all that kind of stuff coming towards me, then going back, and coming towards me, and going back. And I just stood my ground. But I can tell you now, when I'm scared, my little toe shakes. <laughs> and it was, both of them were shaking. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that was, in all the things I've done, and I've been scared a few times. Um, it's probably because you know what he's capable of. Though, yeah. right? 100%. Do you know what I mean? You know, you don't give a fuck. And if he'd got hold of me, I'm not saying he would have killed me straight away, though he probably could have killed me straight away, but he would have done me serious damage before the boys came in. Mm. But I wanted to, but I, I was quite good though. I managed to stand there, and I, kind of emotionless and just like, you know, I just stood there and he, he'd already been charged with attempted murder and this, this was about perverting the... He tried to, he tried to pay off um, a couple of witnesses. And, um, but I was... And my toes didn't shake until I got home. I, even when I went home four or five hours later, my, 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 my little toes were still shaking. Now, again, people don't get that in the police. You know, they don't get that, you know. And all cops, if you've done 30, 40 years, you're going to have moments in your life where you are scared shitless. And... Um, there is no understanding or acceptance of, of the kind of, of that, you know, part of your life. Oh, it's just part and parcel of being a cop. No, it's not. But, but you have to deal with it. 